Hi everyone, so today I'm going to teach you how to make notes and how to make notes not just on a hard copy but also if you want to make it in a laptop or any other device which you want to use. So both ways you will get an idea about what kind of skills you really need to have, what kind of things you really keep, need to keep in mind when you're making notes. So let's go ahead and dive into how to make notes. So first of all, I think you need to know is whether you should make notes or not, whether to make notes or not. Is it important to make notes or is it not important to make notes? Well, the answer is both yes and no. First of all, I, I'll answer for why yes, why you should make notes. Well, notes help you to revise. They help you to organize. They help you to remember more better. So the habit that I had, my personal habit was that whenever I was studying, let's say I'm studying medieval history or I'm studying ancient history, while studying, I used to make notes in my either on a page or I used to make notes on uh, the software on Evernote that I was using at that time. But that doesn't mean that you have to do that. That was my personal habit. A lot of people just like to study from the book and then they can come back to it later because a lot of st students what they also do is let's say in medieval history I'll give you an example they make notes on the sides of the book so like here I have made some notes on the side of the book or on the margins of the book so a lot of students do that also so that is also one of the note taking skills but whether or not to make notes it really helps you to revise organize and remember so if you are a kind of student who likes to go to shorter version of things towards the end of the exam instead of looking at the entire books like normally a lot of people also look at entire books then you should have notes okay otherwise uh, it will become very difficult for you to revise and which is very important because UPSC syllabus is very very vast so unless you have good notes from where you can revise quickly you will not be able to score very well in the UPSC exam secondly why no it is a very tedious exercise, takes a lot of time and you might end up making notes which are basically the entire book only. So you are not making good notes. If you are making good notes, it is very important to know how to make good notes. If you are making notes, it is very important to know how to make good notes. But if you are not making notes, then you are at a little bit of a disadvantage because self-study is harder when you're not making notes. Self-study is a little harder when you're not making notes. So it's a tedious exercise, it takes a lot of time and you might end up making a lot of notes which are useless, but that is not a reason you should not make notes. You should learn how to make notes, which I will teach you in this particular class, and then perhaps it will be of a useful purpose. Okay, so whether to make notes or not, these are the two things that I would like to say to you. Now, third thing, if notes are already available in the market like let's say i have for example i have shared my quality notes i have shared my art and culture notes you can find it on my community tab so if i have already shared uh, i have also shared my management notes if some topper has already made a lot of notes if they are available in the market through coaching institutes should you be making notes well my answer for that is no if you like the notes that are available already out there, what you can do is use those notes and when you're studying, you can add your own notes to them. So you can add your small comments on the side because these are already in notes format. Maybe the author or the person who made these notes missed a few things. So what you can do is use these same notes and add a few things to those notes. So that will really help you. That being said, I don't think you really need to make notes for lot of subjects anymore like polity have provided very good notes art and culture have provided good notes management have provided good notes similar they have provided some other notes also you can use them and add to them but in case you feel those are not sufficient or you don't like them then you go about making notes because that will help you more but if you think those notes are decent then you don't need to make notes just add your own little things and that way it become perfect so that's the strategy i used I actually found Nitin Singhania sir's online notes, uh, offline notes. He had made these notes by hand for art and culture, which eventually became very popular. So I downloaded them, printed them out, and then I used them as my notes. But then I added a few things to it. I made my own notes because I felt that I could add a little more to that. 
so similarly you can do that and for every student it's a little different all right so this is how you should think about whether or not to or to make notes here i have a notebook with me so what you need to do is understand why you need to make notes what is the purpose of notes see the purpose of notes is really to be able to revise well and to be able to organize your studies these are the two things that you really want to do when you are trying to make notes you want to revise really well and you want to be able to organize your entire studies for upsc to achieve both these what you need to do is first of all create a system of making notes what does that mean what do you mean by system of making notes that is you need to have a different notebooks different notebooks for all the notes that you are making you need to have different notebooks and they should be well organized so what i mean by this is for example i have this one notebook i should use this one notebook only this one notebook maybe add later more notebooks if i need to for one subject let's say history or let's say geography or let's say if you want to use it for your optional and optional also is one and two and then it has different subjects in it so you want to use different different notebooks and different registers for different kind of notes similarly online you want to do the same thing you want to have different online folders for different subjects and that is how you should make notes for them so this is very simple and for each of them you should have a table of contents table of contents or index right where you should just make a list of things that are available in the notes or what you can do is also if you don't want to make a table of contents if that's too much of a work then what you can also do is just have stickies and you can stick those stickies wherever the chapter is so if the first chapter let's say you have made notes on constitution of india uh, and then the second one is center state relations the third one is rights the fourth one is duties so that way you can just put the stickies and that way here or on the top you can put the stickies that way you will remember where what is and you can quickly go to that that is true for hard copy notes but if you are making notes let's say on some online device let's say notability or evernote these are the softwares most commonly used for making notes then you can just do a quick search or you can uh, title your particular folder or your particular file as that particular subject so that will be easy to go through later so this is what i used to do as well i used to make a table of contents and which page that particular note was on because paging really helps because later on you will be revising and you will be revising in it in a period of 1 to 2 hours so you won't have that much time to really spare so this is the system of making notes that you want to organize and to organize what you need to do is create table of contents with pages in the file or in the register that you are working with and you also want to have notes topic wise all right now what i also implore you to do is what i also encourage you to do is that don't just make notes in categories of these big subjects let's say history within history you have art and culture and within art and culture you might have indus valley civilization you might have ashoka period gupta period right you have all these different kind of sub topics so what you need to do is let's say you are studying ancient history or let's say you are studying medieval history we can take the medieval history book here so first of all you know that you are going to study this book for medieval history this is the ncert book um from class 11th that i have recommended for this particular subject so what you need to do is go through the table of contents okay these are the table of contents that are given and identify what are the major topics that you will be covering and accordingly make notes don't just jump into the book and directly start making notes what you need to do is just first of all identify what are the major things you will be going through see here i have highlighted chola empire cultural life so you know you will be making notes or at least you will be studying this part so then it will be easier for you to make notes now that being said so now let us discuss what kind of things 
you should remember while you are making notes to think or to add while making notes okay while you are making notes what kind of things you should remember or uh, more importantly see if you are making any kind of history notes any to, to anything to do with history then in that case you need to include some major key figures major names of names of major figures okay then you need to include the time frame you don't need to remember exact dates let me tell you you don't need to remember exact dates for upsc like exact dates you can only focus on certain time frames and maybe a little the events that are very very important for that you can remember dates for example you don't need to remember when gandhi ji was born but you should remember the time frame of his life life that in which period where he was in south africa then he came back to india in when in around in which years he launched the different kind of movements in india so that is important okay so major names of ma names of major figures time frame or uh, in some cases you should remember the years also but not very much this is not important you should just know roughly what time frame it was then you should also remember some major causes or reasons all right for those particular events that are happening in history similarly that would hold true for polity also that would hold true for any other subject let's say environment let's say economics if you are studying a particular concept you should know the what the why the how and the when of that particular concept all right only then you will be able to do justice to that concept so remember to include these things in your notes in short hand what that means is that every definition every concept you should be able to pretty much summarize in two three sentences not more than three four sentences should be needed to summarize a particular concept or a definition because if you take it more than that then it will not really help you so for example if upsc has asked about some kind of geographical concept let's say that geographical concept is a ring of fire then you should be able to summarize this geographical concept then you should be able to then you should be able to summarize this geographical concept in 3 to 4 lines or sentences at the most along with appropriate examples wherever necessary so focus on that that is what upsc's focus is and that is what you should focus on all right so that is one of the things that i wanted to tell you that focus on concepts for different things and focus on what why how when of these concepts and in case there is history for history you should remember the major names you should remember the when or the timelines and you should also remember the where because these are the small small data or facts that will help you to actually stand out a little bit in the paper which you are writing you don't want your answers to be entirely generic you want to give references to time periods you want to give references to personalities you want to give references to conceptual keywords so that's where i'm going next what is the other thing that is super important the other thing that is super important for any kind of notes is keywords keywords are very very important all right you should ensure that for every concept you are studying you should know the keywords of that concept so let's say we are studying polity and in polity we are studying the concept of justice the concept of let's say rights so in this we should know some examples and we should also know the keywords that are used in the books so that we can actually enhance our particular answer so for example let's say we are let's let me take economy and for economy what i will do is i will go to a chapter of inflation or let's let's go to poverty okay now in this i don't think you need to know very detailed things about a lot of concepts but here what you should know when you are doing any kind of note making is let's say we are studying amrita sen's capability approach on poverty this is a very important topic and concept you should know this as a upsc aspirant so in that you should know the keywords 
if you go through the definition and if you go through the definition then you will see the capability approach is a people focused approach the author here has highlighted this so you should know these keywords it's a people focused approach and it focus on enhancing people's well-being by expanding their capabilities so that they can lead the life they value now you don't need to memorize this but you should know the keywords that capabilities are all about people and how to expand their capabilities how to increase the standard of life how to increase their well being in life so the keywords being being well being people focus right and after that when we go into the elements there is freedom element and there is capabilities and functioning elements these keywords you should remember and this is how you should study as well this will make your studying also easier if you think like this you should focus on the concept the concept is clear in your mind but you need to remember only the keywords for the actual exam before if, because if the concept is clear in your mind you can write you can answer anything any question asked about that concept so that is the key in upsc if you want to do answer writing well understand the concept really well and after that focus on remembering some keywords of the topics that are mentioned in the upsc syllabus and that way it will become super easy for you to study and that is how i used to also make notes so now i have told you the important of keywords i have given you an example let us make a few notes and show you how exactly notes are made so that you can actually make notes like that okay this will take 2 minutes so i have medieval india i picked this because this is the hardest book to read and hardest book to make notes from and we will just jump to something more um, substantial that is the vijayanagara empire okay because questions come from the vijayanagara empire it's one of those parts of the histories a lot of us are not very aware about aware about but it was very very important okay so here is the age of the vijayanagara and the bahamanids in the coming of the portuguese so time frame is around this so now how i would make notes all right how would i make notes topic is age of or simply you can write vijayanagara empire now how do i make it simple for me i'm not going to really put this topic entirely as what is given here i am not going to put bahamanids i am not going to put coming of the portuguese i will treat those two as different notes here i am going to only talk about vijayanagara empire because this is important from upsc perspective timeline so you can put here timeline is around 1350 to 1565 ad all right so that will help you to remember around what time this was happening around 1300 to 1600 1650 so that's it easy way to remember it now i will go into the details i have started reading the vijayanagara and the bahamani kingdom dominated india south of vindhyas for more than 200 years this is already given now you can make a small map let's say this is india okay this is a very bad map but try to please just bear with me or you can actually have an actual map printed out and you can put it on the next page and then later when you read through it you can figure out where was the bahamani kingdom bahamani kingdom actually in which parts of india i don't think it's given in the chapter in a map so you, what you do is you google it this is how you should think about studying okay so you google it that what area was the vijayanagara empire in once you google it you will be able to find it on some map given on google image and then you can mark that this is the vijayanagara empire this is the extent of the vijayanagara empire okay that way you will remember better then you should go into more details they not only built magnificent magnificent capitals and cities and beautified them with many splendid buildings and promoted arts and letters but also provided for law and order and development of commerce and handicrafts so key features now this is the introduction and in the introduction itself they have given the key features of the kingdom so how do you need to you just write magnificent capitals urban development because it says here cities so you can think how would upsc like to understand it from your perspective see you should give a broader vision that they had urban development even in back that in that day buildings okay arts 
letters what does letters mean it means literature all right and then law and order and commerce and handicrafts arts and letters handicrafts you can put in put in arts and uh, arts only i think and then you can put here commerce so there was a lot of business happening at that time all right so these are the major features and now you know these major features of the vijayanagar empire and you can always answer a lot of the questions by reading more about this particular time of history in india so now you go further into studying about the vijayanagar empire you will see thus while the forces of disintegration gradually triumphed in north india so that means north india was disintegrating south india and deccan had a long spell of stable governments so at this time north india disintegrating because there were a lot of invasions and all that but south india prospered during this period all right so now you've done that so similarly i feel like you can make notes in these kind of points so that you can remember and in short hand you don't need to write every line this ended with disintegration of bahmani empire towards the end of the 15th century and of the vijayanagar empire more than 50 years later after his defeat no need to write this because this will come later in the chapter because what this is just the introduction all right so after you write the introduction and noted down important points then you come to the vijayanagar empire foundation and conflict with the bahmani kingdom now this is about the their conflict and their foundation later so i told you when you are reading any chapter first go through the sub topics of the chapter the bahmani kingdom then it goes through mahmud gawan climax of vijayanagar empire and disintegration all right portuguese this can be completely different notes that how portuguese came to india and so and so all right so vijayanagar found uh, this is the first sub topic about vijayanagar empire um, it was founded by hariharan bukka who belonged to a family of five brother this is important so now here you need to write vijayanagar empire founding hari 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 hara and uh, bukka brothers okay you write written down the and you can also write brothers according to a legend they had been the feudatories of the kakatiyas of the warangal and later became ministers in the kingdom of kamili in modern karnataka i don't think that's very important so this is how you need to recognize what facts are important for gs and what are not this is a story that is happening so just remember the story but write down only important things in your notes when kampili was overrun by muhammad tughlaq for giving refuge to muslim rebel the two brothers were imprisoned converted to islam and appointed to deal with the rebellions there a muslim governor of madurai had already declared himself independent and the hoysala ruler of mysore and the ruler of warangal were also trying to assert their independence after a short time haryana haryara and bukka forsook their new master and their new faith at the instance of their guru vidya ranya they were readmitted to hinduism and established their capital at vijayanagar so basically you know that they were captured they were converted but then they gave up their old faith and they uh, reconverted back uh, readmitted back to hinduism by vidya ranya and they established the capital at vijayanagar so the whole sources established capital at vijayanagar after initial years of imprisonment and conversion by muhammad tughlaq now if this is confusing to you what you can do is go online google search and then you will be able to get a better understanding look at a video of vijayanagar empire all right so this entire thing is easily summarized in two three points here all right so similarly you go ahead and keep making notes of the vijayanagar empire so this is how you make notes folks i hope you understand from the examples that i have given remember two three things that i have already told you that notes are very important because you want to be able to revise organize and remember 
but if you think that tds they take too much of time then you should think about how to efficiently make notes because they're critical for self-study and for some things you don't need to really make notes which is already the notes are available online or some books are already in notes format so this is my advice to you uh, and this will really help you in the upsc exam